Margaret Cavendish was a revolutionary rhetorician who exceeded expectations of women in her time. This was accomplished through her ideologies as well as through her bold actions in literary works. Born Margaret Lucas in Colchester, England in the 1620s, records of her exact birth date were lost during the English Civil Wars. She was the youngest of eight children. Sadly, her father died when she was two, so Margaret was primarily raised by her mother. The Lucas family were traditional royalists, unlike their neighbors. Margaret was somewhat isolated because of this and grew up being very bashful and shy. Due to her wealth and privilege, she received some instruction and education from a governess and visiting tutors. Her education was not mandatory, and because she didn't enjoy her studies as a child, she often just wrote for fun and enjoyed designing her own clothing. She was in her late teens when her family was attacked by their Puritan neighbors due to their conflicting beliefs. Because of this, her mother and her fled to Oxford to live with her sister. After escaping to Oxford, Margaret and her mother became acquainted with royalty, and Margaret was maid of honor to Queen Maria of France. She then met William Cavendish, an English royalist and aristocrat, in 1645. They fell in love and were married in December of that year. He studied the arts and science and was very supportive of Margaret's work and encouraged her as a writer. He later assisted her with furthering her education and publishing her books. They did not have any children together, so Margaret didn't have a great estate to care for, and she was bored. She began to write. Cavendish's work covered a variety of subjects, ranging from natural philosophy, early modern science, poetry, science fiction, and playwriting. Her main goal in becoming a writer was to attain fame. Although she wrote about gender norms and integrating women into professional spheres, she emphasized that men and women had their own specialties and would outperform in respective categories. In her epistle to the poets, she pleads that those judge her work with reason and not prejudice due to time frame and the dangers of writing as a woman. Cavendish's fiction work, poetry, playwriting, etc., was intended solely to pass the time and not serve as any higher truth or critique of the world. In Cavendish's natural philosophy, she refuted the common Aristilian logic, or the personalization of ethics and how one may live, and instead embraced Stoicism, the justice and balance of the universe, and how nothing is inherently good or bad. She focused mainly on moral philosophy and, and the acknowledgement of passion and emotion and the relation to self. In The World's Olio, Cavendish shows a clear recognition of the difference between masculine and feminine styles and their different uses, yet does not suggest that women are inferior in all elements. In this, she also addresses the vast differences between public speech and private writings, and how women and men have particular skills in both. Cavendish faced the challenge of accounting for her audience's prejudices against her as a woman while also saving her own work from oversimplification on that account. She did this by adopting a plain, yet clearly intelligent writing style. She uses direct extended metaphors that are clear and serve to make her works easy to read. Through the style, she displays openness about her thought processes and the intelligence to communicate them, displaying her rationality in a matter-of-fact way, which gives those who would prey on her womanhood little to claw after. Instead of submitting to her audience's prejudices by simply writing and apologizing in defense of inevitable criticism, she doubled down on her own intelligence and writes calmly. Margaret Cavendish published her works under her own name, which is significant because most women during this time published anonymously. Being female, Margaret Cavendish viewed her work very differently from most. As shown in the world's olio, she believed that women are inferior to men. She also states that men have a natural advantage to women and that women may only be superior to men if they receive an education. Since she was female, she was not allowed to attend school. Therefore, she learned rhetoric from her brothers and her husband. Being female also affected her view on writing. Cavendish believed that a more masculine writing style was superior to a female writing style. She was a wealthy aristocrat and seated in the inner circle of the royal family, but during her time she was viewed as an entertaining writer as opposed to a serious philosopher, as female philosophers were not yet present in England or France. She was often referred to as Mad Madge due to her flamboyant writing style, dress, and deep-seated desire to be famous. While taking refuge in France with her husband William, the couple developed Newcastle, or the Cavendish Circle, which consisted of many great philosophers, including Robert Boyle and Robert Hobbes. Margaret was included in all of these meetings. When publishing her works, she chose to make them seem as scholarly as possible, mimicking the template used for library or university books. Because of her gender, many scholars did not purchase the book after its publication. However, due to her status, she was able to send them copies as irrefutable gifts. As time went on, her exposure and reputation within the educated upper-class realm increased, and Cavendish was allowed to attend more philosophic meetings and freely write her ideas. 
1667, Cavendish was the first female ever to attend a meeting of the Royal Society. It's indisputable that Cavendish held the power to influence people much more than women of her time typically did. Perhaps it's in part due to the powerful way she acted. Being the first woman to attend a meeting of the Royal Society, as well as publishing in her own name, gave her a unique and powerful advantage compared to other women in her time. In addition, her wealth added to the amount of respect people paid her and gave her more of a platform. Obtaining an education under the table also influenced her success, and her marriage actually furthered that success as she continued her studies along some of the top scholars of her time. Demanding attention was at the top of Margaret's list. She contradicted many common philosophies of the time, specifically those on materialism and natural philosophy. Her masculine writing style and variation of stylistic approach also assisted in capturing and enthralling her audience. Margaret Cavendish's revolutionary approach to rhetoric maintained the duality of reaching her audience while contradicting popular beliefs of the time. This was accomplished through her ideologies as well as her bold actions. From mailing her works to scholars and universities, to being insistent that her work was published under her real name, she pushed the limits of what women could do in this time period. She was among the first of many women to become acknowledged and respected within the community. Her contributions and legacies still remain today, marking the onset of a series of steps toward women obtaining power through rhetoric.